This is called uh, The Rise, and uh, a slightly unusually for you, this is set in London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I wanted to write about oligarchs, and I wanted to write about dodgy money, and uh, London seemed the perfect place, much, you know, yeah, I know. <laughs> we, when we think of London, we sometimes think of it in those terms, and here we are sitting at the top of a high-rise building. Yes. Uh, but it's specifically these ones that spring up uh, in, in nice parts of London where people own apartments but don't actually necessarily live there. It's just a place to park their money safely. And they tend to come from all over the world and I've, some of them have got quite shady pasts yes. uh, and shady presents. So <laughs> I thought, I want to write about these people, these kind of super rich people that we never really see. And obviously you've, you've written short stories before, but in this, I mean, it's a... It, I, you know, I was reading and thinking, wow, he's thought of this amazing cast of characters. You've got all these backstories. As you're writing it, you're thinking, mm, this could be a novel. I'm, <laughs> I'm a fool to myself. <laughs> kind of, <laughs> kind of. Um, I mean, it started life, I was thinking of it as a film uh, originally. I thought it'd be great, kind of like J.G. Ballard's High Rise, yeah. but with oligarchs. Um, everything falling apart and getting chaotic. Uh, and then Amazon came along and said, have you got anything that's a bit different? And I thought, yeah, I could do that. So, um, and I loved the characters. I loved Gish, who's the main character, who's a, a young uh, woman cop in London who cycles everywhere because it's quicker and, of course, better for the environment. Mm -hmm. um, but everybody teases her about it. Uh, and, and you've got the older cops. You've got a kind of seven situation with the older cop and the younger cop. Um, but she's, I, I, yeah, you're right. I, when I started writing about her, she really got under my skin and I thought, why? Why have I put her in a short story when I could have put her in a novel? Yeah, but also it seems to me that the amount of, you know, uh, brain power of figuring out the crime, because it, it's not a, quite a locked room crime, but it's almost a locked room crime. It's all in this building. But the amount of plotting you have to do is similar, surely. It is. And then the, it's all about condensing it. It's all about almost doing it like a poem where you just, you know, minimum mil, minimal words to get across what you what you want to say. So a character has to be sketched in very briefly. Um, but you try and do your best. And, and I liked I liked the challenge. I thought it was a, it was a good challenge. And I liked writing about London because I used to live in London when I was poor. And now I visit <laughs> London and I've got a bit of money in my pocket and it seems like a very different city to Isn't me. Isn't it though, Ian? <laughs> it really is. <laughs> it's a very different city when you've got a little bit of money. I used to live in Tottenham, for goodness sake. <laughs> <laughs> and I commuted. I commuted to Crystal Palace every day to go to work. Yeah, ninety minute each way commute on public transport. Yeah. it was fairly brutal. Yeah, London's a very different place. Yeah, it really. Is. Well, if you're living in the Rise, how lovely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you've done short stories before, because uh, you've done, you know, you publish collections of them. Did you approach those short stories in a slightly different way than this one? Yeah, yeah, this was a, a slightly different length. I was given a few more words, and it, it did sort of rage out of control. I think originally they said they wanted 5,000, it ended up being double that, and then some, uh, because I was just enjoying the situation and the character so much, and I just kept finding more things I wanted to do with it. A short story, I mean, the wonderful thing about a short story, if you're a writer, is that you can start and finish it in a day, and you will have put down on paper something that's never existed before. How extraordinary is that? I always think that with, with 26 letters of the alphabet, Anybody can write a sentence or a paragraph that's never been... You know this, you're a writer. Okay. You can write a sentence or a paragraph that's never been written before. Yeah. It's amazing. I mean, that, that, that little bit of beginning something is amazing because, you know, just whatever you've done, it wasn't there before. But a novel is terrifying, right? Because a novel is like a big, long race <laughs> and you're going to be at it for months uh, <laughs> and you're going to start to lose track of, oh, my God, which character is this and what were they doing and can I come back to that and do I need to go there now? Um, with a short story, you can contain the world pretty much in your head before you begin. Yeah, but I mean, there's no, you're no, you're not slowing down in any way. You're oh, so, I am. Are you? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I used to write two full-length novels a year when I was young and full of. Oh right, yes, you're vigor. very, you're very slow. Yes. Yeah. I'm, now, now it's a novel every two years. <laughs> yeah. And my wife insisted this year was my sabbatical year. I wasn't allowed to do any writing, so we've been doing a lot of traveling, a lot of touring and stuff. While we've still got our limbs and our faculties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so next year, I've got to. I've, in fact, soon I'll be starting to to mull over the next book you've won all the the golden daggers and you've done you know you are such an incredible crime writer but uh, to begin with you you didn't consider yourself a crime writer no i didn't read crime i think i'm the only still the only crime writer i know who wasn't a fan of crime fiction before they started writing it i thought i was writing the great scottish novel i was a postgraduate student at edinburgh university and I wanted to update the theme of Jekyll and Hyde and bring the story of Jekyll and Hyde back from London to Edinburgh, where I felt it belonged, because it was written by Robert Louis Stevenson, a very yeah. famous Edinburgh writer. And it just happened that the main character was a cop. He was a detective called Rebus. And I didn't think much of it. And then when it was published, it, I looked for it in the bookshop, the local bookshop in Edinburgh, and it was on the crime shelf, and I was horrified. It, where it was, I put it in the Scottish literature section. I would lift it out and put it in the Scottish literature section, and then go back the next day, and it was back in the crime section again. 
So I thought, well, I must be a crime writer. So I started reading crime fiction then and only then and, and liked it. I liked a sense of place. I liked a strong storytelling. Yeah. I liked the fact that crime fiction can take on big themes. Um, it can be a comfort read or it can take on very big, dark themes. I liked all of that. So I thought, why not? And what, I mean, that was in, I think, what is it, 87? Oh, yeah. 87, the first book. Like, it's like, I can't quit you. Like, how the hell... <laughs> Uh, like Rebus just in your life you've retired him yeah. and no he's back and now you've just done a deal for some more Rebus yeah. books yeah. what is it about that character and you? I don't know he's a very I, I like hanging out with him he's a very complex character and the only way I can find out more about him is to spend more time with him So, and I keep wanting to find out more about him I've still not got to the centre of what makes him work and he keeps changing I decided early on he would live in real time. So he's he's young and vigorous and able to get in fights and things in the early books. And then he retires and suddenly he's got COPD and he can't even climb a flight of stairs. But he's still an interesting character. His life has moved on and he's moved on with it. So I just find him really interesting to write about. And also, I always think, right, what do I want to talk about? I want to talk about this theme or that theme. Who's the best person to do that for me? The answer has almost always been Rebus. But at some point, either I go or he goes. One of us has to go. <laughs> I mean, you are writing yourself into a corner, aren't you? I mean, yeah. yeah I mean, he's, well, yeah. And in, in the, the, the end of the last book, very much so. Yeah. Uh, people are waiting for the next one so that they, it can be revealed what, if anything, happens to him. Because he, he is written into a corner in the, the, the previous book. Anyway, but he's a good character. He's a good, and people seem to like him. And that's certain. I don't want to let people down, Graham. Well, yeah. You've invented a character people love all around the world. Yeah. You, you can't just throw them away. And when did you become aware of this idea of, of sort of tartan noir? When did you become aware that that was now a thing, that there were all these Scottish crime writers it, it was it was gradual I mean at first it was people like me and Val McDermott and then uh, and then lots of other people joined the fun because we started to win prizes and sell books I mean at first when I started I couldn't think of very many Scottish crime writers and certainly none that were selling or hitting the bestseller lists but there's something about Scotland it's dark it's got that that Scandinavian noir aspect to it yeah but also we're capable of having great fun so you know plenty of Scottish crime writers like Alexander McCall Smith write very light crime novels so you've got everything you've got everything from very light crime novels to very dark crime novels contained in this very small country um and the tartan noir thing i remember i, I went an american author called james elroy and i went up to him at a convention and got him to get was going to get him to sign one of my books and i said i'm ian rankin i write tartan noir which is like your kind of stuff but set in scotland and he said on it to ian rankin the king of tartan noir and then i pretended to everybody that he had invented this term <laughs> So for years, everybody thought that James Elroy invented the term, but I think I invented it and gave it to him. You're not in the band, are you? There's a there's a talk. I'm in more. another. I'm in another band. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm not in the covers band. I used well. In fact, I think my band is now gone. I'm in a band called Best Picture. I'm the vocalist. Singer would be pretty too strong. They just not told well, you. Well, COVID promoted. came along, and COVID came, and we, you know, we did our last gig in December 2019, and then we've not had a practice session since. So I think, but we did we did release a single. So, excitingly, although it's never been played on Virgin Radio, who knows? Well, now, we've missed a trick here, because now I, I should be able to go, well, here it is, but no. You can't, know. No, here it's not. I think I've got the only copies of that single in existence <laughs> sitting in my loft. <laughs> send them in, send them in. We'll play them, we'll play them. Uh, the Rise by Ian Rankin. It comes out on Wednesday, the 1st of November, as an audiobook and as an e-book. Will it be published in physically as well? No. Uh, eventually, hopefully, yes, but there's a few years when I'm Amazon want the, the rights to do it as an e-book and an audio. Yeah, yeah. 